Hola, everyone. Hola, como esta? How's everybody tonight? Is everybody excited about the new Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition release? I sure am. I'm definitely excited about it. And it's it's actually really nice to see, you know, such a positive, uh, I guess you could say, uh, such a positive influence on Twitter and Facebook uh, of the actual release of it, which is really nice. Of course, there's going to be, you know, you're always going to have edition wars and, and everything. And I know that people are trying to say, don't edition war. Well, it, it's always going to happen. So... But it is nice, uh, you know. It is a nice breath of fresh air to to have a new edition. And you know, I'm a I'm a very hardcore classic player. That's what I grew up playing in the the early '80s in first edition advanced. And I've actually over the last uh, seven months, eight months, I've really fell in love with uh, fourth edition as well. So there you go, guys. That is the that is the new Dungeons and Dragons starter set for fifth edition. And, it is a pretty nice product, as you can see. Uh, Wizards did a unboxing last week, and uh, I'm going to do one tonight. And I uh, thank you guys for hanging out and watching the the review. I, I just got this uh, today. Actually, Wizards uh, sent it today, and I got it from FedEx. and And uh, I appreciate a thank you to Sheila. And also thank you to Wizards of the Coast uh, for this uh, product sponsorship. It's it's really nice, and you know I will do you know fair reviews and give my honest feedback. And you know I'm sure you know I've got a lot of confidence in Wizards of the Coast, and I'm sure they'll put out a lot of fine products in the future for us for 5th edition so alright guys so I'll players box on 4e the 3.5 box and so forth so uh, here is the uh, red brand hideout another encounter map very nice nicely done map all kinds of nice art I really really am impressed with it ooh spiders and here's a uh, runes of a uh, thunder tree oh look at that a green dragon wah 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 they even said that uh, I know Mike and I believe it was Greg talking about there is a green dragon But as you guys can see, the, I mean, the high gloss pages, I can see it on the stream. And this is actually really nice. Uh, here's Craig Mall Castle. I mean, for the $20, guys, I mean, this is an unbelievable, unbelievable buy for, especially, you know, if I said if you buy it online, you can get it cheaper. But I would definitely support your local game stores, guys, because they, they do need the business. Ah, there's a Grick. Looks like an owl bear. Some loot. It talks about the the different areas. Oh my goodness! Look at that massive place. This is a wave, wave echo cave. Wow, very nice. More art. Looks like ooh, nice skeleton. I remember they tweeted this picture out. Uh, there was a looks like a, a zombie on this side. Maybe a ghoul. Oh wow! Look at there. So a beholder type, probably a maybe a spectator or something. More art, looking great. Wow, this art is nice. Hats off to all the artists with their renditions on this. Lots of uh, looks like lots of uh, several magic items, and then here's the monsters as well. And it looks like there's about five monsters a page. Everything from a uh, commoner to dop doppelgangers, bugbears, hobgoblins, uh, gricks, spiders, goblins, ghouls, owlbears, orcs. Ooh, ochre jellies, ogres. There you go, guys. Very nice. And then on the back, it has the uh, 
appendix as well, the index, and it'll tell you uh, what page certain things are on. So that's the uh, that's the uh, Dungeon Master book. So now let's get into the other things of the the box set. What other what other goodies we have? Looks like there's uh, the D and D encounters. Uh, support your like I said, support your local game stores. Uh, probably, hopefully, in the next month, I will be starting the encounters program in Orlando at Sci-Fi City. So, if anybody is in the Orlando area, uh, I will be starting those up. Hopefully, if everything goes through, I'm in discussions with the manager now. Uh, they haven't done encounters for a couple years because they had a couple min maxers that kind of ruined it for everybody before. So I, I don't put up with min maxers. I, I just I just don't. You guys know how I feel about them, uh, especially you know you guys that have been around the stream for a while. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't do min maxers. So, but they were saying that these guys pretty much ruined it for everyone else, uh, and they stopped. So, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, to get that program sorted back up at Sci-Fi City in Orlando. Definitely willing to to make the trip to do it. So there's a a printable character sheet. The blank one that talks about the encounters, and you can go to uh, DungeonsAndDragons.com and you can sign up for the encounters as well. All right, so let's get into the characters now. Looks like there's, uh, I think there's five. So there's one, two, three, four, five. The characters are on pr uh, pretty thickly gauged paper. Uh, looks like we have a, a fighter here, a human fighter. And I'm sure it's probably following the the rules of the of the basic rules, which I said uh, at the beginning of the stream. You guys can go to DungeonsAndDragons.com. They just put them up there at about 12:15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, and uh, it's a double-sided character sheet. It's got lots of information. Stats already rolled. Looks like uh, everything is done for you. You just play it, which is very nice. It talks about the fighter, second wind, uh, fighting style all of the the different uh, personality traits, the bonds, the flaws, which I'm actually really excited. The the bonds and flaws and, and ideas and all that stuff, ideals, that's all new to 5e because uh, the, the last playtest packet really didn't go into this kind of detail, detail the 1014 playtest packet. And I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to add a, a, a nice dimension to RP, uh, which... Uh, Really, uh, fourth edition really did not go into. Not I'm not bashing 4e because you guys know I am, I am very pro 4e. I mean, you could look at my bookshelf. I I have every book just about so, and multiples. So that's the fighter sheet, guys. It tells you literally it's a pre-gen character. It tells you what you get at each level, and it does go up to level five. It talks about the the fighter's background, and you basically just adopt this. And, you know, like my 5th my edition group, uh, when we start playing this, hopefully on Saturday, uh, they're going to adopt these characters. And then once the player handbook comes out in mid-August, uh, then they are going to go ahead and they're going to use these characters here just until the player handbook comes out. And then we're going to go ahead and move to, you know, full-blown races, full-blown classes, oaths, everything. So that, that's, that's what we're going to be doing. But this is just a, a temporary thing, because we, we are going to do this uh, entire module on stream. We're going to stream it. We're going to have a good time with it. And uh, we'll be doing this uh, every Friday. Uh, tomorrow night is the 4th of July. I believe they're all going out and getting hammered. Uh, I'm actually, I'm taking my son out for fireworks tomorrow as well. Uh, we're going to see if we can't uh, set the neighborhood on fire. That'll be pretty sweet. So that's the first fighter. The second character looks like the wizard, and it has the same thing, all your stats, your all of your uh, personality traits, your ideals, the bonds, flaws. Uh, this is a high elf, and uh, this is really nice. Talks about your cantrips, your spells, and I like this uh, character sheet. It's pretty nice. It's uh, really nice for one page. And uh, there is a three-page character sheet 
with the new basic D and D rules. It's at the I believe the last three or four pages of the of the actual book book itself. Now on the back it tells you also uh, there are what it tells you uh, for each level what you get at second, third, fourth level, up to fifth level. It tells you about the wizard's background, all of that good stuff, gaining levels, prepared spells. So that's the wizard. Uh, here's the rogue. And he is a uh, lightfoot halfling. Same thing. All kinds of traits. Talks about thieves can't. And I like how it actually goes into the to the skills as well. So you don't have to, you know, look it up in the book. Uh, so it looks like everything is on your character sheet. And like I said, the, these character sheets are on a on a thicker gauge paper as well. So it's on. I wouldn't say it's it's not a card stock, but it is definitely not your. I believe your standard gauge paper is a ten gauge. So, but this is definitely thicker. And it talks about everything going up to fifth level, uh, sneak attack, doing 3d6, etc. Really nice. Next up is the uh, ooh, Hill Dwarf Cleric. I don't know if Gim would like this dwarf though. He's not a fighter. Again, same kind of paper. Tells you what goes up to a uh, fifth level. Talks about the uh, the traits, all of the uh, ideals, bonds, everything else. And lastly, there's a another fighter. So I'm thinking this is probably a. Let's see. Let's see what kind of differences between the two fighters. Maybe one is the path of the warrior. Maybe one is the the guardian. In fact, I think they took the guardian fighter out to the playtest, if I'm not mistaken. So it looks like the stats are definitely different. Uh, it looks like one is more, one may be more uh, armor based. One looks like a, a little bit more melee based. Yeah, definitely. One's a noble, one's a folk hero. So one has leather armor, uh, one has chain mail, and there's different fighting styles, positioning, so yeah, there's there looks like there's one defensive and one offensive fighter, so one and they're both human. So very nice. They give you a nice variety instead of giving you two of the same fighter. So there you go, and this this is just a a, a false panel. So that's all the contents. Five character sheets, a blank character sheet, the sixty page book and a 32 page book with the, the dice. So my impressions on this guys is it's definitely for the money. It is definitely I definitely do recommend buying this. And like I said, you can get this for 1265, 1235 on Amazon. I believe Barnes and Noble as well. But you can go to your game store and for a couple dollars more, you know, you can get that for for 20 bucks. So support, like I said, guys, support your local game stores. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this uh, this box set is definitely a good grade. Uh, definitely gets a good grade. However, I will say this: I think they possibly could have done a little bit more with the box set. Meaning, if you look at the, you know, the con, there's a lot of we all know that there's there's Pathfinder, there's you know Fantasy Flight Games as Age of Rebellion, uh, you know, Edge of Empire. The beginners, but if you look at those beginner box sets, there's a lot more stuff inside, a lot more fluff. People love fluff. I mean, it's just it's it, it's just what people want, and and I like this. And for the money, it's definitely worth it. But for a few dollars more, they could have put, you know, like a couple maps, a couple fold out maps, maybe some tokens, and you know, it's like a, the the mic. The Mike Merle's interview that I had last week, I actually asked Mike about this. And he had a valid point, a very, very, very valid point. And it talked about they wanted this box set to bring back Theater of Mind, which I totally respect that. And I think 5th edition is definitely going to bring back Theater of Mind compared to like a 4th edition or Essentials. It's definitely going to do that. But people still like fluff. And I, I really, I really believe that uh, 
they they definitely did a great job of this. I'm not saying they didn't, but I I believe they could have they could have knocked it out of the park truly with a couple maps, and maybe some uh, some punch out tokens or, or something like that for the, for the monsters that are in this adventure. I'm not talking like a you know like a monster vault type of token selection or a uh, threats of Ninter Vale token selection, but something like Madness of Gardmore Abbey or the Shadowfell tokens for that related box set. So I, th I think that could probably been a little bit uh, a little bit more as a uh, an eye popping thing because I mean if you look at the Pathfinder box set, look at the Age of Empire, Age of Rebellion, it has all that. And granted, yes, it's a couple dollars more, but if you're going to spend, you know, almost twenty dollars for this, chances are you're probably going to spend twenty-five or thirty, and get a little bit more. So, but there you go, guys. I, I'm I give this honestly, guys. I give this an A. I'm very happy with the way this looks. I like the presentation. I you know I, I and also the dice. I think I think they could have done a percentile dice in here. There's no percentile dice, and uh, they could have done 46 as well. So they, I mean they could have done the the 10 10 piece set, but it's still a nice set. And uh, you know I have a uh, I have multiples of these already. So and I'll I'll probably be doing a couple of these on on raffles and giveaways as well. So. But there you go, guys. That's that's my impression. I, I haven't opened it up. I opened it up with you guys. And that's my my honest opinion. I think it's an A. I think it's it's presented nice. I know they're trying to get in, back into the, the theater of mine, and I totally respect that. But I, I really honestly think, guys, that they they could have done a little bit more of the dice, and they, they could have done uh, a couple double-sided maps, for the people that that do like using tokens, but other than that, it's solid, and I I recommend buying this. I mean, it's it's well worth the money, guys. Totally worth the money. So that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, talk to you guys for a few minutes, and I'll answer some questions. So let's see what you guys have. You guys actually have chat uh, blowing up. So, and first off, thank you guys for for hanging out. I mean, there's a lot of people in here, and and I truly appreciate it. And there's also a lot of new follows. So, uh, Sindrain, thank you for the follow. Viper Edge One, thank you for the follow. Ghost Dragon Twenty Three Three Forty Five, thank you for the follow. Dungeon Man Ten Thirty One, thank you. Turkey Knuckle, that's the that's the new viewer name of the night, guys. Turkey Knuckle, I love it. Congratulations, you won the New viewer name of the night, Turkey Knuckle. Great name. Uh, thank you for the follow, sir. And Marcus VF1, thank you for the follow. So thank you guys for all the follows. I appreciate it. So let's see what you guys think of this. Oh no, definitely Edwin. It is. It is definitely. It is a. It's. It's a fantastic box set. It truly is. But I think they, they could have really did a grand slam if they would have just added a couple more things. And I've, I've actually seen this a uh, uh, couple other people as well talk about that. Just just not myself. But that's the, the first impression that I had. But I, I definitely would buy it. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, there are percentile rolls. Actually, there is a percentile chart in the, the new basic Dungeons & Dragons that are vacant. It is a... I think it's a token. You get to do a 1D100 for a token. And let's see here. I've got the new basic rules I've printed out. I think it's in the equipment section. So let's see. I'll show you guys real quick. Edwin, I will answer your question. Here you go, right here. Every character gets to roll a D100. So there you go. D100, and you get all kinds of things, like anything from a, uh, a mummified goblin hand to a glass eye, to a rabbit's foot, uh, or an empty wine bottle bearing a pretty label that says, I'm trying to read upside down, The Wizard of Wines Winery, Red Dragon Crush, 331422. Nice. So yeah, every character gets to, to roll one of these trinkets. So the percentile dice would have been nice here, and I know you can roll, you know, I know you can roll a 10-sided twice. 
but why not just have the percentile dice? Yeah, vacant. Uh, I yeah, totally. I agree. A fold out map of the town would be nice of a uh, Fandolin. Sorry, my my camera's going crazy a little bit. Maybe I think it's because uh, maybe it's so close. So I'll move my notebook. So there you go. That's probably why. Yeah. Sorry about that. But yeah, you guys need to download the free the free basic rules as well. Yes, uh, Edwin, the miniatures are coming out uh, the same day that the Handbook 1 is. Player Handbook. Well, I'm sorry. The Player Handbook. Not Player Handbook 1, but just Player Handbook. Yes, it is coming out. The the I believe uh, the Hero Set is coming out and the Blind Booster Packs are coming out on the same day. Yeah, I can definitely deal with that as well, Valley. Uh, Valley Wood. I can definitely deal with that. It, I mean, because I've got enough maps to, to compensate for it, but it still would, uh, still would be nice. Because usually, I mean, look at all the box sets in the past for Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, even going back to, you know, Second Edition, Ravenloft and Undermountain, they had maps for those sets. I mean, the the Red Box had maps. The Dungeon Masters, uh, Dungeon Master Kit and Essentials had maps, and. The original blue box for 4E back in, I believe, 2008 when it was published, it had maps, tokens, and all that stuff. So uh, that's one thing that uh, that I noticed that, that caught my attention on this. <laughs> a ring of feather falling. Nice silver. All right, Tom Tom, you don't understand a flip thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they definitely weren't trying to trap people with this. I mean, that's that's definitely obvious. I mean, the the price point is by far the best on the market. I mean, it definitely is. Pathfinder, I think, is like twenty five dollars, thirty dollars, and I believe Edge of Empire and Age of Rebellion is about the same price. Uh, Dragon Age is about twenty dollars, twenty five dollars as well. So. And you can't even get box set two anymore for Dragon Age, so. But yeah, they they definitely they didn't. But that's why the price point is so low is because of there isn't the extra, there isn't the extra fluff. So. Uh, Lou, that's uh, if you're talking about the the basic PDF rules, it's. Uh, let me get a page number for you real quick. It is in the equipment section, and the equipment section is uh, chapter five, and it's on page. Uh, the trinkets, 1D100 trinkets, is uh, pages 54 and 55. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too big on on D100 rolls either, vacant. But it is still nice to have the percentile dice. But if you're a veteran gamer, you probably have 25 percentile die anyway. Uh, Lou, what do I think of the PDF basic rules? I think is I think it's gorgeous, man. I think they did a great job. You missed three point five, too lame to die. You can always there's all kinds of uh, public information, and I believe there's all kinds of PRD documents uh, for the OGL. So you can find those anywhere. Uh, too lame to die. And let's see, Edwin might be interesting to build a campaign the revered way. Uh, what I normally do, have the players uh, make characters including bonds and trinkets and build the world base. Oh yeah, definitely. That's uh, I think that's probably why they put those in there. So, but I think I think that's definitely an interesting content uh, a concept as well. Dungeon, uh, I, I do like that, and I'm definitely gonna incorporate that into my game as well. So. Oh, uh, I give it, I'm going to give it probably a 9 out of 10. So it's definitely good. And in fact, I would even probably say 9.5 out of 10. The presentation is great. I mean, it really is. The box is sturdy. I mean, it's it's nice and bright. It's not dull. Wow, all the hillbillies are shooting off fireworks. Uh, the books are great. The maps inside the books are great. 
I mean, very detailed. There's a lot of detailed information for the dungeon master. There's lots of lots of information for the players as well. The the character sheets are nicely done. The dice are pretty. I mean, the dice aren't you know your plain black or plain red or like in the other editions box sets. And uh, I I definitely give it a high grade, and I would definitely recommend it. So you guys need to get out there, get to the game store, and, and buy it. It's it's definitely a good buy. Oh, I haven't I haven't really dissected it like that, uh, Valleywood. All right, let's see, Tom Tom. So if I'm a teenager who has to use his budget of money that he receives from grandmother and use it wisely, would you recommend it to the teenager with a tight budget, or should he maybe wait? Hmm. Well, no, I, I wouldn't. I would recommend buying it. It's twelve dollars. That's two trips to Taco Bell or two trips to Burger King. So cut out two trips to Burger King and get you something that's going to last you for your entire life, unless you, you know, burn this or something. I mean, it'll last forever as long as you uh, take care of it. Yeah, I, I would definitely get it, Tom. Tom, just cut out, cut out a couple cans of soda or a couple bottles of soda, uh, and or if you smoke, cut out two packs of cigarettes. And there you go. But definitely buy it, Tom. Tom, it's it's worth it. Yeah, man, we got so many. Uh, where I'm at, it just goes crazy, and there's more than fireworks going off too. Oh, it's definitely worth the bucks, Tom. Tom. I mean, it's all, I mean, it's you can get it anywhere between twelve and twenty dollars. I mean, it, that's that's a, that's a steal. It, it's definitely a good price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, Lou. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, uh, Too Lame to Die. Thank you for stopping by. So, uh, Tom, Tom, there's just your your normal set. You know, one of each dice. There's no percentile dice or or no 46 in case you do anything like that for rolling stats. A couple more cents they could add that in there, but yeah, I'll, I'll show them. Sure, Tom, Tom. I'll also, if you guys uh, miss this, I will also have this on YouTube here probably within the next hour. So, there you go. They're sort of like a, a nice blue with a sort of like a white marble swirl in them, as you guys can see there. Pretty nice dice. They're definitely be they're beautiful dice. They are sort of like a uh, like a milky swirl added into it. Sort of like when you take Neapolitan ice cream and just uh, just take a spoon and just mix it and mix it and mix it. There you go. That's what the dice look like. <laughs> yep, Lou, that's it. 20, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4. Six, six piece die set. I, I think the inspiration mechanic is, is good. It, it's a new, a new mechanic that was at a dungeon. But I, I think it's definitely, uh, it's definitely going to add some immersion to the characters. It's going to give the characters a little bit more, I would say, it would give them a little bit more ownership with their character. You know, with the traits, the flaws, and everything else. Holy cow, that was close. Did you guys just see that? We're being invaded! Oh my gosh, China's storming us! They're on the coast! Get your guns! <laughs> that was a that was a loud boom boom right there. So there you go. The D and D fifth edition starter set. We've been waiting for this for a long time, guys. And I'm glad the day is finally here. Now the long wait is for waiting for that first player handbook, Monster Manual, and then Dungeon Master Guide. So that's going to be dreaded waiting for those. Yes, it's going to be a lot more role play heavy, Tom Tom, uh, what you're used to watching with the fourth edition and Essentials. Even though 
in my games, we try to add as much RP as we can. But, I mean, you just have to face it. You know, there is a lot of technical, especially when you're, you're following the, the Orca storyline. Uh, there's, there's a lot of combat, which is not a problem. I mean, I love that, and that's what I love about 5th edition. I mean, 4th edition. But 5th uh, edition will definitely involve more RP and more of my corny voices, which all end up sounding like uh, Spanish or Mexican, so... Oh, yeah, but uh, if you're talking about the, the pre-gens uh, dungeon, it's only for this box set. Because once the uh, the Tyranny of Dragon uh, storyline comes out, uh, I'm going to allow my players to make anything in the player handbook. Uh, I probably won't do multi-classing, uh, but I'm gonna, we're going to see. Uh, we'll see how the multi-classing differs from the October 14th playtest when they actually introduced it uh, into the player's handbook. I don't think it's going to change too much, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, they're going to have free reign to, to do any class, any oath, anything they want. But uh, I'm just railroading him through this because this is what we have information for. So, I mean, I could let him use the basic rules and make characters, but I'm going to save him a lot of time. And we need to learn the mechanics. They need to learn the mechanics. I know the mechanics of, of 5th edition for the most part. So, uh, Tronxy. Uh, yes, I'm definitely, but thank you, Tom Tom. I'm definitely looking forward to playing it too, and we will be starting it uh, probably this Saturday. I'm hoping Saturday night. Uh, we won't have a game tomorrow because it is the 4th of July, but Saturday, I'm going to, the, the Saturday group canceled my 4th edition Essentials group, the Orcas uh, storyline. They canceled for Friday, um, Saturday, so I'm going to try to get the the D&D 5 group to switch from Friday to Saturday, which uh, they've all pretty much said they they have no problem with doing that, so. But that'll probably be Saturday. Uh, Tronxy, to answer your question about the timetable for the release of the DM guide, I believe the the release of the DM guide is no.